Some years ago, I made a video on gaming at 120Hz on a CRT monitor. At the time, I was limited to achieving at 640x480, which is not exactly practical for most games. But this time, I'm going to do the same thing, but at twice the resolution. And slightly better overall production quality. Hello, this is Langmai64, and uh, I've been meaning to redo that old video I made uh, a few years ago where I show off uh, gaming at 120Hz uh, on an old CRT monitor uh, for a while. Uh, mainly because that video is um, not exactly uh, representative of my newer videos and um, it's also a bit hard to watch, especially when the background music I've uh, put in the video uh, turned out to be a bit too loud to the point of making it difficult to make out my voice. So uh, I want to uh, represent this uh, demonstration uh, a bit better this time. So yeah, it's uh, just one of those things. Uh, uh, that happens when I'm still uh, learning things uh, back then. So, yeah, I've also I've also learned uh, about the trick uh, some time ago uh, that would basically allow you to double the resolution while still running at 120 hertz uh, and keeping the horizontal scan frequency uh, low enough for even a, a, a mid-range uh, monitor like this one that can only go up to 1280 by 20, 1024. Uh, to accept the mode, so uh, that would be quite a significant upgrade over uh, 640 by 480. So uh, yeah, so this video is more or less a a follow up of sorts of uh, that old video, which is uh, very much uh, needed. So yeah, uh, enough with this uh, rambling. Uh, let's get right into it. For the majority of this video, I'll be using this ALC 7 VLR monitor as I already have it as my secondary display on my table. I would have preferred using the Mitsubishi RDS-171X which I featured in my old 120Hz video as it has a better picture quality but it's missing a stand so I can't really put it on my table at a comfortable angle. I'll include some clips of games running on Mitsubishi however from an earlier attempt of making this video that didn't quite turn out. The ALC isn't quite as sharp as the Mitsubishi probably due to age and being built with cheaper components. It also shows some brighter looking streaks that only appear on text elements for some reason likely caused by an aging cap somewhere. Both monitors have the same supported horizontal scan frequency of up to 70kHz which is common on most 17 inch CRT monitors in the mid 2000s. I'm still using this generic HDMI to VGA adapter that I used in the old video since my 1050 Ti does not have any analog outputs anymore. Interestingly this adapter supports an interesting number of video modes including non-standard modes apparently which is going to be crucial for this uh, uh, setup. There's this annoying issue where I have to disconnect the monitor from the adapter and plugging it back to get the graphics card to detect the monitor. Uh, I think this problem is specific to this monitor but I haven't investigated it much. The supported frequency range of the horizontal scan rate of a CRT monitor determines the display modes it can support. Most 17 inch CRT monitors in the mid 2000s typically have a maximum of 70kHz which is enough for up to 1280 x 1024 at 60Hz or 640 x 480 at 120Hz. The frequency range required for a display mode depends on the number of vertical lines and the refresh rate of the mode. The horizontal resolution doesn't really factor it much. 640x480 at 60Hz runs at 31.5kHz while 1024x768 at 85Hz runs at 68.6kHz which is pretty close to the limit of this uh, class of monitors. High-end workstation monitors that are often 21 inches in size support a much higher frequency range and therefore higher resolutions and refresh rates, the maximum typically being 2048 by 1536 at 75Hz through a well-shielded VGA cable or BNC terminals. If you're one of those uneducated fools who say VGA does not support Full HD, well think again. The reason why I'm explaining horizontal frequency rates is because this is going to be important in achieving 120Hz refresh rates on a CRT monitor. 
I'll be doing 1280 by 960 at 120Hz as I said in the beginning of this video. I create a custom video mode in the NVIDIA control panel, set the refresh rate to 120Hz, and set the resolution to 1280 by 960 and it turns out that it's exceeding the monitor's supported range. So was I lying like a clickbaiting piece of shit? Well, if I set the scan type from progressive to interlaced and set the signal standard to CVT, it works now. And if I go to the settings of the monitor to see the frequencies it is currently running at to confirm, the monitor is indeed running at 120 hertz. Doubling the resolution was made possible through the use of interlacing, which is a technique for doubling the vertical resolution of a video signal without increasing the signal bandwidth by rapidly alternating between the odd and even rows of a higher resolution image in every frame. An example of interlace being used is in analog video sources such as composite, S-video, and analog television broadcasts, as the NTSC standard originally supported 262 progressive lines as the standard only ran at 15 kHz. But the resolution was doubled while maintaining compatibility with the existing television infrastructure through the use of interlacing. 262 line progressive signals were still used mostly in video games prior to uh, 6th generation, which you can tell by the lack of jitter when playing on a CRT display and when a game isn't running in a high resolution mode on 5th gen systems. You might think that because the signal is interlaced, the picture would look jittery or exhibit combing artifacts that occur if you don't deinterlace your interlaced content properly. In my case, I don't notice the jitter very much because the lines alternate a lot more rapidly and are much smaller than on CRT televisions. I never notice the combing artifact unless I have a dual monitor running and one of the displays is running at 60Hz which causes games to sync to that display, and that is where I start seeing those artifacts. Quite strange, really. There is one such artifact that is in common with interlaced video that cannot be avoided, is that any vertical movement or scrolling will often reveal the true resolution of the video signal. So in this case, you'll see the 480 line resolution that the monitor is actually running at and can look pretty jarring sometimes. I can just about imagine that there's probably going to be a moron who thinks interlaced NTSC video is 30 FPS who'll stumble across this video and say, Durr, what's coming out of the monitor is actually 60 FPS because the video signal is interlaced. No, you idiot. The framer is always tied to the vertical frequency of the video signal, so NTSC is always 60 FPS even when interlaced. I hate that misconception where anything interlaced is half frame rate, even though the video signal actually isn't. It's more accurate in the context of digital video encoding, but that isn't the case with televisions and good deinterlacers. And I especially hate those flat earther like idiots who say CRT monitors have flicker no matter the refresh rate and still swear by it even when you tell them the flicker is significantly reduced at 70 hertz and is further diminished at higher refresh rates. The flicker you see in this video, even when the monitor is running at a higher refresh rate, is actually caused by the camera and could be fixed if I could synchronize my camera to the monitor's refresh rate, but I can't do that because my camera only records at 25 or 50 FPS so I can't really do much about it. There's so much stupid people on this world. And before you call me an idiot who doesn't know about proper video capture, there's a reason why I'm filming gameplay with a camera in front of the screen and that is so the high refresh rate will be captured by the camera as motion blur and would look slightly smoother than usual even in a 50fps video. If I were to capture it directly then there's no way to show it on YouTube unless viewers have 1 or 20 hertz capable displays to begin with and I don't think YouTube supports frame rates greater than 60 anyway. So what's it like gaming with this setup? Well pretty good actually. Though there'll be some problems mostly related to playing modern titles with a 4x3 aspect ratio screen that varies from game to game. Games like Hollow Knight, Cuphead, and Enter the Gungeon can only display in letterbox form likely because they were designed to be played on widescreen displays. Setting the right resolution on Gungeon can be tricky though and can be quite a fight to get it to select 1280x960. I once managed to play Gungeon in full 4x3 aspect ratio which you can see in this old clip I took but I wasn't able to replicate it when taking new clips for this video unfortunately. One of the benefits of using a well-tuned CRT monitor is that they often have excellent contrast that even IPS displays cannot surpass, which makes games like Hollow Knight look excellent on it, especially with the pure black colors that IPS displays cannot fully match. An OLED display would most certainly beat it, but such displays are expensive as heck and develop burn-in faster than CRTs do, if you can find an OLED monitor. 
cameras don't do justice on representing the color quality of CRT monitors, so the only way to find out how good it really looks is by seeing it for yourself. 3D games like Doom 2016, Quick Champions, and A Hat in Time can be played in full 4x3 aspect ratio. And the first two titles only exhibit minor cosmetic issues such as quished UI elements, but A Hat in Time will exhibit some UI alignment issues in the menus, when forcing it to run in 4x3. It also doesn't let you select 1280 by 960 in the settings, so you'll have to go to the developer console and use the set res command to force the desired resolution. If uh, dev console is not accessible, you'll have to do it through the config files. Games that have a hard cap of 60fps such as Freedom Planet will not look better on a 120Hz display because the game still runs at 60fps no matter what, which is uh, quite disappointing really. The opposite also happens in some games such as Ori and the Blind Forest where a game seems to play faster than usual when running at a higher frame rate, which is unusual for a game made in Unity. There are a few things to consider when gaming at 120Hz that also applies on playing with modern 120 and 144Hz capable gaming monitors, in that you'll need a graphics card with enough horsepower to push twice the number of frames or tone down some graphics settings to have a seamless experience. While my 1050 Ti is enough to get a mostly 120fps experience, there will be occasions where the frame rate will dip below 120, but usually above 60 in most cases, but it would still look a bit jarring, like experiencing frame drops at 60, and that 120Hz refresh doesn't help that it somewhat amplifies the jarringness of such drops. Also, playing on a CRT yields virtually zero response time. The converter might introduce some latency, but in my experience, is still way more responsive than all LCD monitors I've used thus far. I suppose this is enough for gaming at 120Hz on a CRT monitor at uh, twice the resolution compared to my old video. And I hope you found this video very informative uh, with, in regards to uh, trying to get more life out of these uh, old glass tubes. That, uh, as long as, it, as long as the monitor supports uh, 1280 by 1024 it should be possible to to do uh, uh, video mode that's uh, demonstrated in this video. And also this is pretty much the cheapest way to experience 120 hertz gaming really. Um, because well, anything 120 and 144 hertz is often very expensive. And you can get one of these monitors for cheap or even free from like recyclers or even friend, uh, friends and relatives if they still have some old junk lying about. Uh, I totally understand that this is not for everyone, especially to those weirdos who are for some reason very phobic of uh, old technology. And there goes my computer. And um, yeah, this is uh, basically 120 hours gaming on a cheap. So I, s I suppose if you have uh, the time, patience, and the space to keep a CRT monitor around, I suppose it's worth it, especially if you have not experienced gaming at that refresh rate in the past. If you manage to procure one of those 21-inch uh, workstation monitors uh, that can go up to 2048 by 1536, um, you sh in theory you could achieve 2048 by 1536 120 hertz uh, on that monitor uh, with interlacing, of course, or or 1024 by 768 at uh, 120 hertz progressive. So yeah, getting one of those big monitors, if you have the space, would be a lot more worthwhile. I'm not sure if the if a, if the generic HDMI to VGA adapter I'm using can handle it though. Um, I haven't tried it because I, I don't have a working 21 incher uh, uh, for uh, some time. And yeah, uh, speaking of which, I originally wanted to make this uh, follow up. Uh, Using that, uh, using my 21-inch uh, Mitsubishi RDF223H, which I've shown in pictures of me using it back in the day, um, back in like 2014, 2015. Um, I was originally gonna, uh, planning to use that, and in fact, I tried to repair that monitor uh, last year, but I was never really successful at it. Uh, um, it cur it has some a lot of power supply related issues, like, and it's also very intermittent, like. Uh, Sometimes you, I, uh, the high voltage will not work, but the heater works. Other times the high voltage works, but the heater doesn't work. And other and most of the time it just doesn't want to work, and it just shows a blinking uh, power light indicating a fault on the power supply, or it would display picture. But the problem 
if, but there's still a problem when I'm even if I manage to get it to light up is that um, there's a, a massive convergence problem. The picture looks a bit messed up. I suppose that's due to the uh, no, uh, the, I think the deflection coils are still good, but there's just not enough power going to it to deflect the the beam hard enough to uh, fit to the monitor's uh, adjustments. So yeah, I was never I wasn't able to repair it last year, and even with my dad's help, who has a lot of experience with repairing uh, CRT televisions, uh, as he used to repair those things a lot uh, back in the day. So yeah, how unfortunate, and I doubt I'll be able to procure another 21 inch or anytime soon, as those things are virtually impossible to find in where I live. Everyone has bought a back of them. And I wish I could just roll back time to the days when there's a there used to be that surplus store in Davao City that had a bunch of those for, for sale for cheap and that my dad used to buy a bunch of those sadly most of those monitors are gone now they had a bunch of like workstation monitors sometimes I didn't really get to see what they had there but I imagine they had like one of those workstation monitors with like BNC terminals, sync on green uh, for your for compatible for compatibility with SGI's and Suns and uh, things like that that use sync on green signaling I would like to point out that this is the first video I've uh, put out that's edited entirely in Linux using the Linux version of Kden Live because the Windows build of Kden Live hasn't been updated for years. The version that's that's uh, available for download is from 2014 and then the ones available in uh, Linux distros is I think up to 2017. So and the problem with Kden Live for Windows being an old version is it's very buggy and also very frustrating to work with. So I decided to do all the video editing under Linux using Debian under Debian uh, SID to be specific so I can get the uh, most recent version of Kden Live and do editing on that. Nope, still buggy. Um, so technically this would be the second video to be I've made under Linux if you count that that part where I edited my uh, that video for about my uh, video capture system. Uh, which uh, part of that video was edited under Linux. So, yeah. Uh, speaking of which, um, achieving 120 hertz uh, in my experience is easiest done under Windows. I'm not sure if you can do it under Linux land. Uh, maybe you can do it through a custom mo uh, mode line in your X11 config files, but I haven't tried it. Uh, especially when I, and I don't think I can do the testing. Uh, uh, for a while because th there's this really annoying problem with with uh, X11 where where, as, where even if I have the CRT monitor connected as the only display connected which the video card will actually detect and show the post screen on the CRT monitor but and also the Debian uh, startup log but as soon as the X11 uh, session starts it just says uh, I don't like this monitor and it just stops displaying video altogether really annoying I'm not sure I haven't tried forcing uh, X11 to output to HDMI but uh, I don't really have the time to test that especially when I have to like get this video done as soon as possible I suppose this is pretty much it for this video and I hope you enjoyed one oh synth guy I haven't seen you in a while where have you been hello lame guy I've been looking for you. Say, where have you been? I've wondered where you've gone to when you disappeared shortly after I created you some time ago. I left because I needed to prepare myself for a mission to kill you. What? Why would you want to kill me? But I've created you from my genes. You're technically my son. Because I'm not supposed to exist and that you created me for the sole purpose of helping you work on your projects. And that I refuse to be what is essentially a slave for my creator. Well, if you don't want to live in this world, then why not just uh, off yourself and be done with it? I want to eliminate and responsible for my creation before I leave this world. But I've got a video to end. And I've been working on this video project in a while and I want to get it out before the end of this month. I can't just die. I suppose I'll just deal with you next time. But remember, I'm most certainly going to kill you the next time we meet. Now you excuse me as I head off to get some bubblegum and chew ass. 
but I'm all out of ass. Mm-hmm, synth guy. What do you expect from a faulty clone? Uh, hopefully it won't be showing up again for quite some time. But uh, anyway, I guess that's pretty much it for this video, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Leave a like, comment, share, or subscribe if you want. And as always, thanks for watching. Lingai64 is signing out, and have a good day.